Okay, um, well, good morning everybody. I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, how I plan for an outstanding lesson. Um, and what you can see on the screen at the moment is what I create for all of my classes. It's basically a bit of an overview sheet um, so that I can get a good picture of who's in my room and make explicit what I'm going to be doing for each sort of groups of, pe of students basically. So obviously you've got the normal sort of how many, all the normal details, but the most important bits are here, where I'll write down any particular students that are on our um, Permessian register, and then I'll evidence what I'm going to do with those students here. I'm going to make it really explicit. And when it comes to the lesson itself, I'm going to, if I've said that right, I'm going to give Johnny a dictionary, I will make sure he's got a dictionary. I'm not just writing it down. I'll actually do those things. And again, I'm evidencing it for gifted and talented. I'm evidence it, evidencing it for pupil premium, whether that's giving them you know, laminated prompt sheets, whatever it might be, I'm making it explicit, I'm showing what I'm doing, I'm showing how it's personalised, and again EAL, or whatever category you would, you would want to make. So I have that as kind of as an ongoing thing for all my classes, but if someone was going to come into my room, I'd have that along with my seating plan, along with my actual lesson plan, as a nice overview. But it helps me plan because it helps me know my class better. It helps me know who's in there, sort of as and when. So what I'm going to do is just show you, as well as that, a few other little activities that I might try to do to make an outstanding lesson, um, or different little features, things we want to make really explicit to an inspector or someone. Okay? So one little idea um, is about guessing learning objectives, or you might guess an outcome. So this is about explaining Christian... Um, kind of attitudes towards genetic engineering, but it's just doing it in a visual way. So I could have that on the screen as soon as students came in, and immediately they're going to be engaged with what's going on. And what is what are we learning today? And so instead of you telling them, it's making everything active, making students think all the time at every moment in the lesson, including objectives and setting outcomes as well. So just a few little ideas I'm going to show you. Um, oh, just a few words here. Another thing is about the big picture, getting students to think, right, how does my learning today link with what I did last lesson, and how is it going to link to the next lesson? And again, getting the answers drawn out. Don't just tell them, this links because, this is relevant because. Ask them, how does, you know, how does our genetic engineering link with human rights? And, and so on. Can they make those connections? Sometimes in GCSERE it's a bit like, here's an issue really distinct. Well, how are they, how are they related? So I'm not explaining these in detail, but just little nuggets and you can ask me about them if you want. Um, another thing is about having a bit of a language of learning in your classroom. I think someone in here is going to talk about solo taxonomy. But having some kind of language at which you, know, you can reference, you can be like, right, this activity is aimed at this target grade or this level of thinking. You can show progress really easily and evidence it so easily with your classes. And students understand their progress better. So any kind of language of learning is really important to establish. Quick activity that might be good as well um, to evidence on my SMSC. So if we're planning for outstanding, we need to show that as well. Here's a quick example of how um, we could do that. I'll give students this sheet and I'll get them firstly to make a little maybe an X along, along, along that line about what they, where they would be on our use of genetic engineering. So maybe finding diseases right to creating superhumans. And Gattaca could be an example of that. Where are they on that? Saying it's a slippery slope. And that obviously then you can link that to why the lesson is important today. So again, making it active, getting them to think about it. And again, you could, you could link that with this, um, getting a couple of articles perhaps. Um, first question, you know, get them to think by themselves or in a pair. Is it acceptable or unacceptable? Stuff we had you know, the three parents thing the other day. And then the second question, say they went into a four, take it further, not just the same question, take it further, we could say, why is this lesson important for a 21st century society? So make an SC really explicit in the plan and with little activities like that. Okay, two quick more activities that I like to do. Um, this isn't part of pound band pedagogy, if you're familiar with that, because poker chips are expensive, but I give every student a uh, red one and a green one, and what I'll do is sort of a sweeping discussion, you may be familiar with this principle. So we'd have every single student say something and it just flows without my interruption, and if they want to say something in agreement with somebody, 
they put their green chip at the front and leave it there, or they want to put their red chip in front. Okay? So a little activity of how discussion can flow without us interrupting and making it as active as possible. Thanks very much. <laughs>